for today. Sri S.C. Kalia, former Executive Director, Union Bank of India. Does not need any introduction, but for the sake of those who are coming for the first time, I'll just tell something about him. Kalia sir is like an ocean of knowledge. It's up to you how much you can get from him. Thanks to you. Well, friends, uh, uh, let me first of start with uh, why trade finance is important. And we will come to the definition of trade finance also. Trade finance, when we talk about trade finance, it is in respect of international trade. Of course. Now, international trade transactions you know, cross-border transactions, can it be done without the support of banking system? The answer is absolutely no, because you need finance. And when he's talking about definition, trade finance is the kind of financial products and services that are offered by banks, financial institutions. We are talking in the context of India and let me tell you first of all, whenever we are talking about international trade, certain things that we have to always keep in mind. You know, Ministry of Commerce and Industry Department of Commerce, Government of India. And every importer and exporter has to have an IEC code, importer-exporter code has to be there with us. So, Every import and export transaction has to be in conformity with the foreign trade policy in force at that particular point of time. And since these international trade transactions, you know, concern foreign exchange transactions, so all such transactions would have to be and current account transactions rules and many other regulations that have been issued by Reserve Bank uh, of India from time to time or by Government of India from time to time. Right? There and there. Okay. Now, we must also know certain terminologies. So, certain things we have to be fully aware about before we get into this. Then, for the monitoring purposes, you know, because IDPMS and EDPMS are the systems that are managed by Reserve Bank of India. We, these are full form is import data is goods and services. And what we are making payment is valuable foreign exchange that goes out. Correct. So these are importers. Now come to second key player is exporters. Actually, exporters are the most valuable player for any nation. That can be done only on by authorized dealers category one banks. Correct? So they are the ones who have been authorized and forfeiting. So where, I mean, you can give the entire responsibility on a non-recourse basis. In fact, it can be on a recourse and non-recourse basis but in forfeiting, it is always on a non-recourse basis. But non forfeiting is generally for long term. And factoring is generally for a short term transactions. Maintaining uh, that particular, he is also going to be a key player with whom that correspondence bank with whom you are maintaining your nostro account. Right? Right? And there would be also or oh, when we talk about buyer's credit, supplier's credit, or license is required, I think uh, uh, we can do the financing. So key consideration for trade financing is, suppose would be whether that particular person is permitted as per the provisions of foreign trade policy when it comes to the specific of. Uh, what is the next that you want me to cover, Arvind Mohan? Because I will go by your PPT then, rather than by my thoughts. Well, on behalf of the importer, so as to facilitate him to get the goods imported 
and then because again i am coming to these are all letter of credits are borne by which i referred to earlier in my talk which is uniforms customs and practices for documentary credit that we deal in documents not in goods or services to which these documents may relate to in the letter of credit they will be honored tomorrow you cannot say goods were not uh, up to the mark this was not they were defective this no those issues are not it's for documentary credits and all issues are resolved under the provisions of this particular ucpdc without the express consent of the exporter also it cannot be revoked so it is what we know and everywhere when we mention we always talk about irrevocable letter of credit then we undertake to honor or make payment in respect of those documents irrespective of the fact bank who will negotiate purchase or discount whatever documents are presented and correspondent banks would be there and then these would be the main key parties and what would be the process that it would be it can be i mean communicated through swift message also as lcs are being communicated uh, we will not get into all those uh, details many other banks may have different name protested bills account or whatever you might call that issue this is the lc process and what is involved go ahead uh, arvind now i will only go by your uh, general sir okay okay so documentary collection is so far as export transactions are concerned it will be tracked and that communication would come and we will pass on those proceeds to the uh, our exporter client right okay so moment the documents will be delivered we make the payment right also right so in that particular case it will be a da basis transaction so far as document collection is concerned maximum period i have told you is 365 days and uh, within that includes also normal transit period and normal transit period doesn't mean what we understand that it is a period of shipment no 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 or transit that takes from x port to y port no or what did all right to the importer bank which may be our correspondent bank in that particular country he has taken this particular liability so he will do the everything from collection and realization of the proceeds right because he has already paid you up front and his entire receivable management would be done by him or you know exposed to political and commercial risk and for that purpose i have already told you that there are standard policies that are available by export credit guarantee corporation that is ecg plays a very very significant role you know in providing that kind of you know cover against political and commercial risk of the goods on due date right so these are commercial risk which are there right but there are also political risk and be a civil commotion there can be some kind of revolution i mean so many country we have seen all kind of you know issues cropping up so there can be those kind of situations which are again political risk or government can suddenly right at that particular point of time he is covered both for political and commercial risk all right and they are also covered under whole turnover post payment credit guarantee scheme of ecgc all right coverage is limited i mean when you are having that shipment comprehensive uh, risk policy of ecgc to 90% but if you are not having that policy these particular policies cover only commercial risk chaliye benefits and considerations i have already told ha huh. do please it was also provided that this particular facility would be available even under that particular mechanism also the vasto account that was to be opened so that is 
something which is available to the exporter that you can get the advance payment. But we must remember, moment an export transaction is done, when the goods have been shipped, that bill of lading has been tendered, it is the responsibility, whatever way may you like to date, your post-shipment finance system is put in place. For import data processing and monitoring system, what is very important, like we are talking about advance remittance, having made the advance remittance, whether there is actual physical exports, right? So, unless and until the goods have come, whether they come in physical forms or they come in non-physical form, like for software and all that, they will come in non-physical form, right? But till such time for export transaction, export proceeds are realized, and for import transaction, physical imports into the country evidenced by a bill of entry payment. So this is something that has to be that risk would always be there for having made the advance. And you would all recall a few years back, one of my friends from BOB is there. I mean, there was a big fraud that took place. The risk and challenges. What is open account is, I think, is he, I am not able, able to understand are we talking about, first of all, we must understand uh, pre-shipment uh, credit or, or packing credit, and then we can come to the running account facility. That is very important. To a customer, exporter, I mean, it would be based on either a revocable letter of credit or on the basis of a confirmed order, unless until it has been specifically waived, right? Packing credit is dispersed, right? It can be dispersed in one lump sum or as per the stages of production and all that, depending on whatever you have decided, correct? Liquidated once documents in respect of that particular packing credit for which that export order uh, for which or our LC for which that particular packing credit was given, they are tendered. So I will convert into a post shipment at once and liquidate that situation where it may be taking you much longer time to procure the raw materials and prepare the goods for that time can be longer than the time that is permitted by the exporter for delivery. Or there can be always instances where this is without the need for lodgement of irrevocable letter of credit and confirmed order prior, that is before making available this packing credit. So, but is it waived? No given. Right? So, first in would be first out. So, whatever comes by way of realization of export proceed would go to liquidate packing credit that has been first granted or whichever documents are negotiated, purchased or discounted that would first go to liquidate the used. Because friends, you must remember while the entire uh, my thought has been restructured today because of this PPT concessional rate of interest. And there is a rate that is applicable, which is called export credit, not otherwise specified. So moment it exceeds that particular, or if it is found that that packing credit has not been utilized. So that is all being done by the banks and how do the banks make available? These, you know, they are doing it to EFC account. Either whatever can see you want, on that particular date, a policy, right, where they are providing exchange fluctuation risk policy also is there that you may not be aware. Beyond that, so ECGC has come out with what they call exchange fluctuation risk cover if there is a loss. Between 2 to 35 percent, they will cover. And beyond 35 percent also, which is very exceptional, which is not going to that will not be covered. But this kind of policy is also being evaluated. And even when ECG issues, I mean, they will also do that. They will provide a limit up to which you can take, you know, you can export to a particular. So those kind of, you know, due diligence and making inquiries and getting those kind of reports to agencies like Dunn and Bedstead, that is very, very important and significant. The misplayed
तो वो आप कवर कीजिए दैट इज योर एक्सपर्टीज आई एम वेरी श्योर वो आप कर सकेंगे and they provide instantly those reports which give us a fairly good idea as to the credit worthiness of that particular counterparty right out is the digitization of course everything is now digitized online system all these lcs you know all these trade transactions nothing is happening manually whatever trade we are doing right from uh, you know advising of lcs to Uh, doing actual trade transaction that is most most of the banks they have been all uh, digitized and and it is being done in electronic mode now coming to certain you know we were talking about that guarantee should be also covered yes lenders that can be also a branch or a subsidy of bank in india also they can also provide buyers credit the right uh, alternative reference rates are now in vogue for external commercial borrowings and this buyer credits also whenever any advance remittance is beyond the specified limit that is 200000 or 500000 has to be that the partner trading country will open with one of the authorized dealers of india central office mumbai before you open a special rupee vastro accounts and i understand i think so much popularity has been gained that almost 92 accounts Have already been Astro accounts. So, the Indian importers, I mean, which are undertaking imports to this mechanism, would be making payment in Indian rupees only, which will be, of course, credited to the special rupee Astro accounts accounts. And Indian exporters <coughs> would be undertaking exports and goods services through this particular mechanism. They will be also paid the export proceeds imports. and we were facing all those kind of problems at that particular point of time point of time i think rbi came out with very good set of uh, regulations and uh, they uh, they clearly mentioned that uh, uh, this kind of mechanism can be put in place of course with their approval and we can open uh, the special rupee vastro accounts and uh, under this particular arrangements also Uh, there is permission for issuance of bank guarantees for trade transactions participants want to ask about the things which have been discussed today or maybe about a thing which has Anything. not been discussed you can ask not, and not, uh, i would be more interested if you talk me about anything which you wanted or a separate session yes yes i totally agree yes of course of course of course i just mentioned in the passing yes, because yes, i personally told, believe this is a very important step that has been yeah, taken yeah, yeah. by the government once the rbi gets that assurance that there is not going to be flight of capital until that time i don't think this is going to happen see there are concern genuine concerns capital account transactions of course there are restrictions and i think that call uh, will be taken by reserve bank of india as and when they feel it and i think we must respect their chain of funds in sblc So yes. one party was uh, enjoying the benefits of SBLC in US, and what he has done, sir, under the this SBLC was continuously renewed by Union Bank and other consortium members. So that part party they utilized that amount and uh, re-remitted the amount taken by the ICICI Bank US. So when I investigated, I found that the entire proceeds of SBLC were again sent back to India. Right, standby letter of credit. So standby letter of credit is nothing but a guarantee that is issued by a banker. Correct. For issuing an SBLC, you as a banker or an issuer of SBLC must satisfy yourself that there is a genuine requirement clean. Yeah. Actually, that party wanted to open some stores to sell the shrimps, and uh -huh. he did not open the stores, and on the contrary, he Not have happened, but yeah. yes, I mean, despite entire due diligence, things can go wrong. I am not. Uh, yes, please, uh, Mr. Katari has a question. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, please, sir. Uh, very good afternoon. Thank good afternoon. you for uh, this uh, present uh, this webinar on this trade finance. My question is on uh, this uh, 
uh, on diamond sector actually the gjd sector despite of all the uh, this technology available for uh, this uh, due diligence on the foreign we have been uh, just uh, recently we had seen that surat diamond bourse was uh, inaugurated by our honorable prime minister nikit right why banks became averse to financing this particular sector is something that is known to all of us as bankers right right what is important is that whatever lessons we have learned from the episode that unfolded before us we should definitely learn from them normal financing of this sector so far as import and export is concerned uh, there is always you know ko ya kisi aur ko no i think i had given my thoughts <laughs> already and uh, you have covered exhaustively so working on the blockchain and on the blockchain uh, various counterparties are in a position to uh, operate uh, some of the foreign banks are already doing that in couple of minutes uh, domestic yes, trade, trade transaction it is happening i agree pardon sir in domestic trade transactions the in domestic, domestic trade transactions domestic trade not transactions. happening in international but for domestic trade uh, yes in international also blockchain is working sir uh, international because, trade transactions i am saying ah uh, trade yeah so that is what i am saying because uh, i am working on this particular space as a strategic consultant to swift india discussions and uh, of course i thank the audience who came over on our invitation to join into this webinar and ask their questions also and made it a successful